This is the full process of how to finish an all-on-four monolithic Ciconia implant bridge. I will show everything from layering Mio Pink and creating a natural looking gingival to create lifelike looking teeth. I will guide you through a special Ciconia green shade process, a technique that will elevate your work and create aesthetic looking teeth that will set you apart from the rest. I am milling all Ciconia full arch cases in a C-clamp with marked high definition areas to reduce the green green state contouring process. Green state contouring is a most critical step and I'm using the Wagner toolkit to contour all my zirconia cases. I make no too little adjustments to the sintered zirconia. Zirconia is a very abrasive but fragile material, so I do not recommend the use of carbide burrs. The milling burr cannot reach some areas even with high definition milling strategies, so I'm using a diamond burr to define the CJ. Play close attention to the tooth shape and don't over or under contour, especially in the tissue transitional area which I'm thinning out. I see many technicians using diamond disc on zirconia after sintering. 95% of the contouring of monolithic full arch cases is done in green stage. So I spend the most amount of time in this step. The most beautiful meal layering technique won't compensate for a bad contouring job. I love the small diamond disc from Brustler because it's small and flexible enough to open up interproximal areas. With a fine diamond, I can refine the areas the disc does not reach. I have been visiting many labs and I don't understand why technicians don't spend the extra time in green stage contouring, but like to grind so much on the Sinter Ciconia. Incisal embrasures are especially easy to open in green stage and you don't risk creating microfractures. Things like changing the height of the thinness are impossible and dangerous to do in Sinter Ciconia. Ideally, you would design those correctly, but I'm not a great designer, so I have to fix these things afterward. I have met many people who can visualize shapes better in the physical world than in the digital world. I like to draw on zirconia and ceramic to visualize the areas I need to adjust. That way I can carve out the interproximal transitional line angles and give the teeth more character and definition. I have seen too many technicians who cannot draw the changes they like to make, so I always ask them how can they use a burr to make these changes. Your zirconia contouring must be spot on when you're using Mio instead of porcelain. You can change little things later with the Mio structure, but your work will be really stand out if you put the extra time to contour everything correctly in green stage. Especially the free margins and the fine areas where the eye is naturally drawn to. Before moving forward with the surface texture, I usually buff out the zirconia to give it a smoother surface. You can also apply all the techniques for surface texture and ceramic work and I made an entire video about it. I've seen technicians who try to grind the surface texture in solid zirconia. I've even seen people taking a high speed and redefining occlusal anatomy on posteriors. You have to remember that Zirconia's green stage is about 20% larger than Sintered Zirconia. Therefore, everything you will apply in the green stage will be smaller and less visible. Surface texture especially is one of my favorite things to do. Remember, a crown always looks more natural and has light reflections into all. Smooth crown covered with saliva will appear fake and like a jelly bean. The fine texture on the surface of a crown and every attention to detail will make your work stand out. I pay attention to every little detail. The tricky part in Ciconia green state contouring is to imagine how it will look after sintering with a layer of meal and glaze paste on the surface. Don't be shy to over accentuate the detail and learn from your mistakes. You can always take rubber wheels to remove heavy texture in sintered Ciconia. I like to draw guidelines for grinding on the zirconia to visualize the texture. That will make the texture more symmetrical. 
I've seen technicians rushing through these steps, resulting in uneven or slanted textures. Always use a clean toothbrush to clean the dust from the surface to avoid white pits in the sintered zirconia. After the zirconia is fully sintered, I carefully remove the support bar and grind off the support pins. If I did my job correctly in green state, that is all I have to do in contouring. Sintered zirconia has a thin oxide layer on its surface, and if you don't grind it off, I recommend sandblasting the surface with aluminum oxide with low pressure. Before glazing, clean the surface in an ontosonic bath and a steam cleaner. This ensures the zirconia is free from dust and oil and prepared for the exciting next steps of glazing with Mio. Even though Mio offers a fantastic brush kit, I found these brush heads from Harvest Dental. I've been working with brushes by Kolinsky Hair forever, and I will give Nilo a try to see if it challenges the attributes of water absorption. They are slightly more affordable, and besides the stylish look of the package, the handle is interchangeable with magnets and already feels well balanced in my big hands. The Mio Aesthetic System gives technicians the ability to easily create aesthetic restoration that rival natural teeth in an ultra-thin layer. Mio works with all zirconia and lithium basilicate material and is easily to integrate into any lab workflow. I've been using Mio for the last couple of years now, and even though my learning curve was steep, maybe I'm just a terrible technician, I will never go back to a conventional staining system. For this case, I'm using a handful of Mio stains, or as Jensen says, liquid ceramic. I don't want to include too many colors, otherwise it might get too complicated for you to follow, but there are some great technicians out there teaching Mio hands-on classes. Mio is a simple and easy way to match shades and get the depth and translucency needed on monolithic or cutback crowns, and all in just one firing. I can change a shade, raise or lower the brightness of a crown, I can create highly characterized restorations that rival aesthetics typically seen with hand layer restoration and all just with a thickness of 0.1 mm. My first step is always to put a very thin and even layer of glaze paste on the surface of the zirconia crown. If you're familiar with Bob Ross Happy Little Trees, Mio is using a similar red on red technique that Bob was using in his paintings. Don't make the glaze too thick since it just serves as a medium for the stain to flow better. Mio stains are self glazing so there is no need for a thick glaze layer. After applying the base, in this case B shades, I place clementine on the neck of the crown. Clementine is probably my most favorite stain in the Mio system. With smoke, the purple looking stain, I lower the value in the incisal edge and apply it in the upper third of the crown. Clementine is so versatile, I can also apply it at the thin layer at the incisal edge to give it an orange translucent look. Mamelong stains have some orange as well, but they are too opaque for this effect to shine through. Cobalt is a dark grey blue, and I love it for small, high translucent clear accent. Imagine layering clear porcelain. Cobalt will give you the same effect. Be careful, it's very intense color and use it only in small areas. Storm on the other hand is a more subtle blue. It's a little bit more intense as smoke but not as intense as cobalt. I use storm for translucent area at the mesial and distal incisal areas. Mio is all about creating contrast between dark and light areas, so apply storm with a little offset at the incisal and not at the outer edge. Halo Spring is a great stain and you can apply it directly at the incisal edge to create a halo effect. Halo in natural teeth is how light breaks when it enters translucent areas and Halo in Mio does a fantastic job mimicking that. Make sure it is not too fluid when you apply it. Fisher 
is the only powder in the Mio system and can be used in occlusal pits but also to create discoloration at the neck of the anterior. Don't mix it with fluid but use a small amount directly picked up with a brush. Linen is great for crack lines and similar to the crack liner stain we all love from the Ivoclar Empress system. The first firing cycle is long, about 55 minutes with a long cooldown. But after that, we can begin with layering of the pink gingiver. I remember the era when we all layered Oronex cases with porcelain. And some labs were and are still very good at it. It takes years to learn this trade though, and with Mio entering the pink market, we are seeing a shift in the way these cases are manufactured. There are some fantastic technicians out there who can produce beautiful lifelike pink restorations. In this tutorial, I'm using four different shades of pink, but that should not limit you from experimenting with more. After placing a thin amount of raspberry, a dark red pink between the roots, I cover the majority of the pink with hibiscus, a medium light pink. I try not to bring it all the way up into the free margin area and leave some space for a lighter pink like flamingo. On the eminence of the roots, I add a small amount of copper and blend it in carefully with the hibiscus. Around the teeth of free margins, I'm framing the teeth with a light pink like flamingo and blend it out to avoid hard lines. If I need to add more dark pink in some spots, I can create more accents. Remember, it's all about contrasts. Midnight Blue and Fisher make great veins and you can apply them in a swirly line with branches. With veins, more is less, so don't overdo it. To fire the pink, I'm using the same firing cycle as before and get a great result that is acceptable in most cases. If you want to bring your work to the next level, you can add some structure to the gingival now. I'm using only Orchid for the structure to cover most of the facial gingival. The structure is a special kind of porcelain and if you are an experienced ceramist, you will find it intuitive to use. Apply only a very small amount of structure, which means a thin layer. If you don't see the underlying veins or colors, it is too thick and will cause cracks during firing. The goal here is to sculpt another small dimension of character to a color and make it three-dimensional looking with colors still shining through. Tissue is not perfect, so don't try symmetry. Blend it out towards the basal areas to avoid hard lines and the need to grind on it. With a Mio large brush, carefully tap the finished structure layer to create small pits. I use structure frost to build the labial frenum, but be careful since frost is high in value, only use a small amount. I'm very impressed by the Harvest Dental Nylo brush by now. It works well for Mio colors, but it's too soft for Mio structure to my opinion. After firing with 0 minutes holding time, no vacuum at 720 degrees, you will get an amazing result with very little effort thanks to Mio colors and structure. To cement the tie bases to the cornea, I treat both the cornea and metal tie bases with a thin coat of metal primer and let it rest for 30 seconds. Then I use a dual cure cement like Panavia or Multilink Hybrid and mix it well on a pad using a micro brush. Cover just a small amount of cement onto the tie base and carefully insert it into the zirconia opening. Clean up the remaining cement with a Q-tip and screw the restoration onto the model. Tag cure each implant side with a handhold light wand for about 10 seconds and let the entire case fully cure for 7 minutes before unscrewing it. I hope you enjoyed the video and you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and leave a nice comment. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now. Hit the notification bell so you get updated on all future videos. I made a similar video about nano ceramic in a trilor bar layered with composite from Angscam. If you like to watch it, I'm going to leave a link in the description. Until then, stay tuned.